Hi, I'm Jeff Meisel, Presidential Innovation Fellow with the U.S. Census Bureau, and today I'm going to be talking about the City SDK project. So first, a little bit of background on, on what we're trying to do. Ultimately, this is a community-oriented project with the city at the core, uh, and the goal, the goal is to provide enhanced usability and access to the census public APIs. Uh, the way we do that is uh, through a set of tools and open source libraries that are available on GitHub that allow you to connect census data, both geography and demographic data, to other uh, types of federal and local data sets. And ultimately, we're trying to foster an ecosystem to improve interoperability across uh, various data silos. And so, you know, really, we're trying to build with, not for, uh, through this initiative um, and have folks scrub in and help us uh, make the biggest impact that we can at the city level with open data. So specifically what's included, as mentioned, there's an open source code library. So currently the language that we support is JavaScript uh, and we hope to uh, add additional support in the future. We have a series of technical guides that walk users through various scenarios using the product, uh, as well as, as open source standards, uh, formats, and, and tools such as GeoJSON, Google Maps, et cetera. And then we provide a mechanism for partners to build their own modules and plug into the ecosystem. So currently there's a census module, uh, a Department of Energy module, USDA, HUD, ESRI, uh, and, and Socrata. So this gives us um, a good start, but certainly we want to um, involve many more entities with helping drive this project moving forward. So what do we mean by improved access and usability of census data? So to give you an example, um, the gray boxes you see on the top of this slide show what it would take to get Washington DC population with our, with our public API, which by the way is, is super powerful. But the thing is, oftentimes you have to be a, a census expert to understand um, all the nuances and how to really extract all the power from the API. So before you would uh, get what a, you'd get Washington DC's FIPS code, if you knew what a FIPS code was, and a lot of folks, um, that's, that's new to them. You'd also have to determine the appropriate variable from a list, uh, which there's many, um, variables within the ACS, so sometimes it makes it hard to choose the one you're looking for, even if it's a simple one. Then you would request the data for the specific variable and the FIPS in combination, and then extract data uh, to get your response. Uh, but with the City SDK, we try to simplify this process. So you can build your request in, an, a G geo, or excuse me, in a JSON object, you issue that request one time to the SDK, and then it's able to handle that uh, response object. So the benefits are, you're able to do a multi-API request uh, using a single call. So again, get, getting that geo and, and demographic data all at once. You're able to pass in um, a, a common name as an alias. So in this case, you pass in the word population to the city SDK, and it knows that population equals um, the, the variable B06011 underscore or 001E. Um, and then from there, it's a modular architecture, so you can pull on other APIs. So, with that, let's, let's jump over to our GitHub I.O. page uh, and see what this looks like. So when you go to the GitHub.io page, it's uscensusbureau.github.io slash citysdk. Uh, you'll see here that we have our kind of overview of the project, our getting started materials, guides, galleries, a little bit about our, our public challenge, um, and then ways you can contribute. But I'm going to start with, uh, with getting started. So if I jump over to this, uh, this menu item, here you'll see uh, a way where you can quickly get your census API key. Uh, what this pop-up allows you to do is to enter your email address and it'll email you your key. Your key. Um, it'll usually take a couple minutes to do that. But once you have it, you can go ahead and enter it um, into a pop-up that'll uh, come available when you press this button. I've already entered my key, so I'm gonna jump straight to the demo. But what you're looking at here is, let's say we wanna draw a boundary of a state. And so the request looks like this. I have a state, in this case, Maryland. Um, I want to define the level to be uh, at the state level, and, and we'll show you how we can modify that in the future. Um, and then I want to essentially get a, uh, get a boundary of that state information. So this is really cool because what this allows us to do is get uh, the, the census geography data in, in GeoJSON format. So now all of a sudden, as an app developer, you know, my world opens up to many different tools that will accept GeoJSON formats and I can begin developing a web app uh, more quickly because of this. So let me go ahead and run this. In just a few seconds, you'll see the, the boundary of the state of Maryland show up there. Okay, so that's, that's cool. Now what we can do 
is if we copy in uh, this sublevel information, and I can post this just right above the state of Maryland, what this will do is this will actually return all the value from one level deeper within the, the census geographies. So in this case, one level below state is counties, uh, one level below counties is tracts, and one level below tracts is, is block groups. And the data that's supported within, uh, the, within the city SDK maps directly to the American Community Survey data sets. Um, and so the lowest level of granularity we go is, is block groups. So I'll go ahead and run this again. And in a few seconds, we'll see all the counties from Maryland uh, appear on the map with, with their respective boundaries. So there we go. So there's actually four different ways that you can pass in uh, a geography uh, specification to the city SDK. You can use, uh, you can use state, uh, you can use address, uh, you can use uh, lat long, um, and then there's one other that I'm forgetting. Let's see, see what the other one is. You can also pass in your own custom geography as well. So that's one thing that I think is um, extremely exciting about this is you can actually have uh, a GeoJSON boundary that is representative of, of a neighborhood uh, in your city. And so you can pass that in um, and then uh, return the, the various uh, census entities within that custom geography. So continuing further in this getting started tutorial, you'll, you'll see how you can return um, various parameters from the ACS um, and how you can use the aliasing feature. So that's pretty cool. You'll also see how you can unify other APIs uh, into the pro project, such as uh, the USDA farmer's market. And I'm gonna show a demo of that uh, here in a second. But first, let's dive, let's dive into um, how this container geometry works um, in a little bit more granularity. So, so here's a, a demo that um, show, shows if we have an arbitrary geography um, drawn on our map. What can the city SDK help us with? So in this case, I've drawn a triangle between um, you know, three cities. I have Baltimore, Annapolis, and Washington, DC. And if I click a button here, this is you know, behind the scenes calling the city SDK, and I can get all the census tracts that fall within that, that triangle. Um, and actually, in this case, um, with the parameter set to geometry, any, any track that touches the triangle will be included. I can set it to geometry within, and it'll it'll pull in and exclude anything that touches and, and just everything that's uh, you know fully within uh, that triangle. Looks like there's a bit of a latency on the network connection. Um, so that's tracks. Um, I can similarly do that at the counties level, and in this case, nothing shows up on the map, which indicates that there's actually no uh, no counties that are completely enclosed uh, within that triangle. But if I go back to tracks. You should get that to appear again. So there it is. Cool, so let's do a recap of what just happened um, in this demo. So the city SDK, we, we saw how it sits on top of the public API as well as the Tiger Web services. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Tiger Web uh, houses all the geographic information of census. So with the SDK, we were able to easily access uh, ACS data using lat long, zip, uh, state, uh, or complete address. We were also able to use GeoJSON formats uh, with TigerWeb. So this is, this is really exciting, and this is a capability that the census has not had before um, natively in one of our projects. Um, you can use, you can acquire both geographic boundaries and your demog demographic data in a single request. Um, so this allows you to tighten up your code. You can use aliases for common variables um, like population. Um, you can define sublevels to tune in your level of granularity for the data you want to have passed back. And you can pass in your own uh, custom geographies, uh, such as a neighborhood in your city. Uh, and this is important because there's no uh, you know, kind of ruling jurisdiction of what defines a neighborhood. Um, and so in different parts of the country, you may have um, a neighborhood boundary that, that works for your project and you're able to pass that into the city SDK. So let's take this a step further and look at another demo on um, kind of the modular architecture of the project and how you would combine multiple data sets into building a web app. So I'm going to jump back over to, to GitHub for this example. Okay, so on this, on this uh, map that I'm about to show you, this was developed uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a workshop um, hosted at 18F. Uh, we had many 
um, partner agencies and, and local organizations participate. Um, and uh, one of the groups that built their module during this workshop was HUD, the, the uh, Housing and Urban Development uh, Agency within the U.S. government. And so this is pretty cool. You know, HUD is one of the agencies that depends heavily on census data for some of their uh, programs that they support throughout the country. Um, and in fact, if you, if you look at all the data um, that is informed by, um, you know, census information, you, government spending amounts to $400 billion dollars that is driven by this. And so what that means is a lot of open data sets um, are, are very closely, you know, entirely coupled into census data. Traditionally, it's been hard to combine those together, uh, but with the city SDK, we're able to take a step towards, you know, having more interoperability uh, across different data sets. So what this demo uh, sh shows, um, so I've zoomed into the map of Chicago, near the downtown area, let me zoom in a bit closer. So now I can look at the various metro stops. But what I'm going to do is actually draw on the map uh, an arbitrary uh, boundary that encompasses uh, the metro line. So say, for example, I'm doing some analysis on, on the housing market, and I want to look at the impact um, uh, of housing you know, around you know, certain distances from the metro. What this example app allows me to do is, is use uh, the city SDK and the census geographies to um, get back uh, track information and then you know, pair that with, with HUD data that shares the information on the amount of uh, outstanding loans, both number um, and total volume uh, in dollars um, within those census tracks. And so, so that's pretty cool. I can also um, you know, create other boundaries within the city and you know using these multiple you know custom geographies do some more advanced analysis um, in just you know one uh, you know one uh, page of code using the city SDK which traditionally would have taken you know quite a bit of code to do this and so this is uh, an example that, that we think talks to you know kind of the power um, of combining data sets I think what would be even more compelling uh, in this demo is if we were to take local data from Chicago you know perhaps that's building permit data uh, or something else that would provide even more insight into what's happening um, on this. But this is just a proof of concept that shows you know, how, you know, how you might go about using, uh, using the city SDK. To that end, we have a, a modules guide that walks you through how you can build an example like, like what we just saw. Uh, this particular guide uses uh, USDA farmers market data. Uh, and so it kind of walks through, through step by step how you would import the modules, how you would instantiate the modules, um, you know, and one of the, you know, in this case, we're, our, our example is Google Maps, but this could be Leaflet or, or kind of the mapping uh, tool, tool of your choice. Uh, setting up the variables here, um, setting up some of the mapping capabilities, but then this is kind of the, the key uh, request to the, uh, to the city SDK. So I'm looking for all the counties in California. Um, on my containers at the state level, um, and I'm selecting sublevel to be true, so this allows, allows me to get back the counties uh, accordingly. Um, I have a little bit of logic here using jQuery uh, in order to provide a pop-up, um, but then from there, um, all I'm doing is uh, inserting data that I get from the response from the USDA API uh, into that pop-up. And so I have the working application running here in the browser. Um, you can see the county layers uh, provided uh, from the Census Bureau. Then if I, I hover over and click on one, I can say, okay, San Bernardino County, uh, here's all the farmer's markets that are available, um, and play around it from there. So that's just kind of a quick example. You can download the full source, you know, throw it in your text editor of choice, and run it on your, on your local machine. But um, this kind of shows how you can quickly get up and running with combining multiple data sets using uh, the city SDK. I'm going to jump back to the slides now and, and do a quick recap. So what we just looked at were how you can use modules to integrate additional data sets into your project. Um, if, if you're interested in, in local data, which, which is highly, you know, highly important, um, you can also use the Socrata or the ArcGIS module that are um, provided. Or if you want to build your own module, which we invite you to, um, you can look at the guide that explains you know, how you can go about you know, creating your own module. Uh, once you build it, um, you can submit a pull request to the project. 
um, and then we can uh, simply add it to our, our gallery, which showcases all the models that have been built to date. Um, and we, we recommend uh, just uh, you know for version, versioning control and ownership that you host the module on your own GitHub repo, um, but um, you know, submit a pull request so that we can uh, tie it into the project. So with that, what are some next steps? So ways you can get involved. Starting this week, um, there's there's national the National Day of Civic Hack, Hacking happening uh, across the country. So we invite you to participate uh, in your local area. Um, we invite you to continue building new capabilities um, using the city SDK. Um, and particularly, if you have the opportunity to build a module and add in a new data set, that would be fantastic. Um, we're, we also have a, a national challenge um, from now through the end of July, where we will be highlighting um, some of the top demos that uh, are based on the city SDK um, through, through a special uh, demo day opportunity. Um, and then and the last the last plug I would have is you know go check out our, our GitHub. If you have ways to improve this project, please submit those through the issue tracker. Also check out our, our Scrum board so you can follow follow live what's happening um, you know with, with our dev team and, and the features we're putting into it. But ultimately this is a, a collaboration um, you know both with the federal government and then and cities, um, and we want to ensure that we're making making it so that software developers uh, at the city level. Are being successful with open data. That's really what this project is all about. So check us out on GitHub um, and, and please give us your feedback. Thank you.